Happy Father's Day, Dad. I'm excited to make the train platform with you. Thanks for playing football. Hi, Daddy. I miss you, and I hope you have a great holiday. Love you. Happy Father's Day, Dad. I love it when you play Smash with us. Happy Father's Day, Dad. I love it when you play games with me. Happy Father's Day, Dad. I love it when you swim in the pool with me. Happy Father's Day, Dad. I love Happy Father's Day, you. Happy Father's Day, Keith. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's
stop the Lord Almighty? Hello, I'm Rich Shoemaker. I'm a ruling elder here at Pilgrim Church. We want to welcome you to our online service this morning. You can watch anytime. Uh, for now, please consider uh, sharing a link on Facebook and encouraging others to watch um, with us next week or um, anytime after uh, we have gone live. Kids, we have content for you as well. So talk to your parents about going on the YouTube and finding uh, kid-centered uh, content that you can watch uh, at any time after this. Pilgrim Church is here to make disciples who are making disciples of Jesus Christ in various ways. Connect with us. We'd like to hear from you. You can fill out e-connect cards, which are found on our Facebook page, so you can share your thoughts with us. Join a pilgrim group. Uh, we're doing uh, Zoom pilgrim groups soon. We hope to be meeting together, maybe down here at the church. Uh, listen for news about that. Um, you can uh, find contact information about those small groups on our web page. Please consider volunteering to help, <clears throat> to help with worship, serving the hungry, and helping the isolated during this time. Let's stop now, uh, find a seat, and put our full attention to the Word of God. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We've been going through Heidelberg Catechism Question 1. What is your only comfort in life and in death? Before you answer, just consider carefully what we're responding to. There's so much uncertainty, so many things right now that could make us hopeless. What gives us hope, not only in death, uh, what's coming afterwards, but actually in this life, where are we finding our hope? So as I read the question, please answer from the heart if you agree. And here we go. Christian, what is your only comfort in life and in death? That I am not my own, but belong with body and soul, both in life and in death, to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. He has fully paid for all my sins with his precious blood, and has set me free from all the power of the devil. He also preserves me in such a way that without the will of my heavenly Father, not a hair can fall from my head. 
Indeed, all things must work together for my salvation. Therefore, by his Holy Spirit, he also assures me of eternal life and makes me heartily willing and ready from now on to live for him.
Let's talk to God now by joining together in prayer. O oh Lord, you are awesome in every way, perfect in knowledge, righteousness, justice, and at the same time compassionate, merciful, and loving. And as your creatures, your image bearers, you demand that we reflect your character by speaking the truth in love, by upholding justice and mercy, by hearing the voices of the oppressed, by showing compassion, and by loving our neighbor as ourselves. Lord, we fall far short of this, and were it not for your mercy, we would be terrified by your justice. But Lord, you offer us forgiveness while remaining just. How could you do that? Lord, by your mercy, we don't pay the penalty we owe for our sin against you and others. Jesus paid this penalty for us in his death. And by your grace, we receive the righteousness of Jesus imputed to us, which we did not earn. So we confess our sin and receive your forgiveness. Jesus is alive and interceding for us. We praise you for that. And you have sent us your spirit to empower us to change and to bear fruit. So, Lord, we ask you to enlighten and power us by your spirit to humbly walk in a godly way and show the good news of Jesus to this broken world in our words and actions. Help us carry out our roles as ministers of reconciliation, reconciling people to you and then to each other. Lord, we also intercede for those who are sick in any way, from coronavirus or otherwise, and those who are suffering job loss or other impacts of this pandemic. We also pray for those who have lost friends and loved ones during this time. Lord, relieve their suffering and encourage them with help from the brothers and sisters and increase their faith and joy in knowing you. Lord, we pray for our leaders, the president, Governor Wolf, Mayor Kenny, legislators, judges, public health professionals, law enforcement officers and first responders, social service workers. Lord, move them to think and act with godly wisdom and use their positions for good. We ask that you would be with those who are moving away. <clears throat> Sharon, Tim, Sirwa, Margaret, and Kwame, we rejoice in the marriage of Ryan and Hannah. These are our, our friends and, and brothers and sisters, Lord, and we rejoice in, in our relationship with all of them, wherever they go. And we thank you for the beauty of nature, your creation. The psalmist declares, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the works of your hands. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made. We thank you for all this and we pray in Jesus' name. So I'll say together, amen. I want to give an introduction to our preacher this morning as the Larsons are on sabbatical, Pastor Charlie Jones. Uh, he grew up uh, right in this area in Germantown and also in the West Mount Airy region. He came into full-time ministry at Wissahickon Church, which is just a block away from us. So he is our true neighbor to us. So please listen carefully to the word of God as he brings it to us. Praise the Lord, everybody, and thank you for the invitation to uh, share with you in the Word of God. I'm uh, Pastor Charlie Jones from uh, Wissahickon Church, and it's my honor to be here with you this morning. I pray that all is well and that you and your family are in the presence of the Lord and His ever presence is with you. Um, I appreciate Pastor uh, Eric for allowing me to uh, come during his uh, sabbatical and I pray that he is well and getting plenty of rest during this time and that the Lord is covering him and keeping him and his family and strengthening and encouraging him as the days unfold. Well, he asked me to sing a song, so I'm going to sing a song before I go into the Word of God. Blessed Assurance 
Jesus is mine, no matter foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit. Washed in his blood, perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior, I'm happy and blessed, watching and waiting. Looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. All the day long, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. I'm going to preach out of Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 1 through 7. And it reads, As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received, but completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bind of peace. There is no there is one body and one spirit just as you were called to one hope when you were called one Lord, one faith and one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. But To each one of us, grace, grace has been given as Christ appropriate. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We ask that you would add a blessing upon it to the hearers of your word. Father, let your word go forth and not return to you empty nor void, but do that which you set it out to do. Father, I pray that you would speak to me and through me. Say it and I shall repeat it in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, use me for your glory at this moment. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. As a title today, we're going to talk about a united front. The church leading away in love. Here Paul affirms that the Gentiles, which were known as the non-Jews, have been reconciled to God and brought into his people, brought into the, the body of Christ, into the family of Christ. And he called them to his people. That discussion provides our starting point for today. Paul explains how believers should live in unity and peace to accomplish things, the mission of the ministry through Christ Jesus together as one. Paul begins by emphasizing the oneness of God's people, the uniting frontier, the strong stand together, the linking in as a strong chain together. And Paul says that he is a prisoner of the Lord. That means he is bound together with Christ, hold firm in the standing in the structure of the teachings of the Bible. 
So it might reflect in the early church or in the early Christians, the confessions of faith that would lead the way for others to follow. God's word has not changed. It is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It is the only thing that will stand the test of time. It will be here when we're gone, just as it was here before we arrived. But interesting enough, when Paul talks about a prisoner and being a prisoner in the Lord, he means that he walks and conducts himself in unity with Christ's teachings. And he is locked in to doing exactly what the word of God calls for him to do. Paul is saying that I am bound to live a life worthy of the calling of God. The act of creating one family in Christ requires his children to live in a manner and that will honor the word of God and to put honor on the work of God. And Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 through 28 says, So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all, for all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed themselves with Christ, there is either Jews nor Gentiles, neither slaves nor free, nor is there male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. That is amazing to me how God can take um, people of different ethnic groups and different uh, backgrounds to bring them together in him to become one body, to become one one unit to become one family in Christ. Christ loved all of us, which is great. Humanity is, is one big melting pot of God's design. And he put us all together to get to, to know him in a very real way, to grow together in faith and to grow strong together. But he calls us to be humble and gentle and patient in that process coming together. Patience is a natural result of being filled with God's spirit. It gives us patience to learn one another, to grow in unity, to stand together. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 and 23 says, But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, it is fervorance, it is kindness, it is goodness, it is faithfulness, it is gentle, it is self-control. Against such things there is no law. So putting up with one another in love as believers, because we belong to the one family of God, we must bear with one another, learn from one another, grow with one another. Now, unity of the spirit refers to the unity that can only exist because of the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit binds us together in peace. Christ as the, 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 the person that we find peace in. The work of Christ leads to peace between God and humanity and between Jews and Gentiles. There is one body, one spirit, a oneness in faith, one faith, one baptism. And Jehovah is our God and father of all. And over all and through all, he joins all people together under his sovereign rule. Isn't that amazing? I remember when um, the story I will share with you, when my parents begin to adopt other children. And they weren't raised exactly the same way we were. They came from different backgrounds. But the, the, the time that they brought them into our family, they were our friends first, and then they became our brothers and our sisters. 
and we love them as we love each other. They joined in and became our family, a united front. And so our family instantly grew from four to six very quickly. And the thing about it is when you see them today, you could not tell that they, they weren't born straight from my parents, but they act like us, they walk like us, they talk like us, they stand like us, they became us and we became them. And we lived as a happy family growing up. And I was a teenager when that happened. And so it wasn't a long, it didn't take a long time for us to blend together and realize that we are one unit. And it's been love ever since. And our family extended, which was awesome. God's gift of grace is given so that we can build up the body of Christ. God's grace is given to us that we can pass it on grace to others. The church of believers can operate sufficiently in the calling and with the ability to serve in ministry united together. Paul associates God's grace with love. It's all love. God is love. And God wants us to love one another. One of the, the commandments that Jesus spoke, he said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. This is how they will know us apart and know that we represent God is the way we love one another. God love us to the point where he forgave us of our sins. He sent his only begotten son to die for us. And the Bible says, for God so loved us that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. God loves us. And what he uses is that gift of love towards us that we can share the same gift towards others and lead the way of righteousness towards God for others to follow. Because Christ said a prime example, he set an example, we're stronger together. We are stronger together. There's a statement that says, divided we fall, but together we stand, and we stand strong. And God's love, it is forever more. Great now as it was, and it will be. God's love covers us. Paul pens these words in Romans chapter 8. He says, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen. It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died more than that. Who is raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or dangerous swords? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to slaughter. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us for I am convinced I like King James version because it says for I am persuaded 
Christ has convinced and persuaded me to get to understand his love, his grace, his mercy, his everlasting power and strength and encouraging words. I am convinced through God's word that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any power, nor any height, nor any depth, or anything else that has been created will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. It is good to know that nothing can separate us from the love of God and nothing should separate us from loving one another. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to dive into your word. Father, I pray that your word would encourage some, strengthen some. But Father, I pray that it was a word of life that would bring light to darkness and that your people will receive it and be not only hearers but doers of your word and begin to spread more love, show more love, stand together as one to lead the way of righteousness. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Nothing of our efforts stand, no legacy survive, unless the Lord does raise the house in vain. It's built. Oh, Lord.
Now leave with this blessing from the last two verses from the book of Romans. Now to him who is able to establish you in accordance with my gospel, the message I proclaimed about Jesus Christ in keeping with the revelation of the mystery hidden for ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all the Gentiles might come to the obedience that comes from faith. To the only wise God, be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen.